The World Bank Group says Malaysia's economic recovery in the coming year will be underpinned by the effective rollout of a COVID-19 vaccine. In a press conference following the launch of its Malaysia Economic Monitor, World Bank senior economist Shakira Teh Sharifuddin said the organisation sees Malaysia's GDP growing by 6.7% in 2021 after contracting by 5.8% this year. A successful vaccine rollout aside, she said the forecast is premised on continued improvements in exports and a build-up in momentum, particularly in consumption and investment. Growth will also partly be driven by a low base effect from 2020. In terms of sectors, The Economist shared that there has been some pickup in the manufacturing sector in the third quarter of 2020, especially the electrical and electronics sector, with the agricultural sector also being fairly resilient. With the gradual reopening of the economy, she said the World Bank expects the improvement to be broad-based. The organisation's 5.8% contraction forecast for 2020 is wider than the 4.9% estimate it previously made. Shakira explained that this was largely due to the re-imposition of the CMCO, which had an impact on the economy and also the factoring in of a larger contraction in the fourth quarter of this year. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced Putrajaya to go back to the drawing board for the 12th Malaysia Plan. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department for Economy, Datuk Sri Mustafa Muhammad, says the pandemic led to the government delaying the tabling of the economic development blueprint to early next year from the initially scheduled August 6th this year. This was to take into account the massive changes in the economic landscape globally as well as in Malaysia and to revisit targets and make realistic plans. He noted that the 12th MP, which covers 2021 to 2025, will take into account the UN's Sustainable Development Goals as well as the Shared Prosperity Vision. The minister also highlighted that the fourth quarter of 2020 has been a lot more challenging for Putrajaya in terms of mounting an economic recovery than initially expected. This is due to the surge in coronavirus infections, but now that it has eased, he said, a quicker recovery of the economy towards the end of this year can be expected. The Parliamentary Public Accounts Committee will call UMNO President Dato Sri Dr Ahmad Zahid Hamidi in his capacity as former Defence Minister to assist in its probe into the Ministry's non-delivery of six literal combatant ships to the Malaysian Navy. PAC Chairman Wong Kah Hua said today that the panel will summon him early next month to complete the proceedings. Also to be called are former Royal Malaysian Navy Chief Tan Sri Abdul Aziz Jaffar and Bausted Naval Shipyard the main contractor of the LCS project. Wong told a press conference in the Dewan Rakyat today, Bausted Naval Shipyard's appointment was made via direct negotiation and as of October this year, some 6 billion ringgit has been paid, yet none of the vessels has been built. According to the schedule, two ships should have been built by now. The PAC will also visit the LCS shipyard in Lumut Perak next month before tabling its report on the issue in the Dewan Rakyat by March next year. EcoWorld Development Group posted an 18.4% fall in fourth quarter net profit to 66.45 million ringgit. This was despite a healthy rebound in both sales as well as construction progress following the gradual relaxation of the MCO from the third quarter. Quarterly revenue declined 30% to 635.47 million ringgit. EcoWorld declared a maiden interim dividend of 2 cents per share. For the full financial year, earnings shrank by a third to 135.17 million ringgit, while revenue dropped 18.9% to 2 billion ringgit. The performance was mainly due to closures of sales galleries during the MCO period, the temporary secession of site activities from mid-March to mid-June and the cumulative impact of inventories written down in the third quarter and fourth quarter of FY20. 
Meanwhile, International Arm Eco World International saw its net profit plunge 85.3% to 17.44 million ringgit, despite top line jumping to 57.38 million ringgit from 254,000 in the previous corresponding quarter. For FY20, net profit more than halved to 80.33 million ringgit due to a lower share of results of JVs and the commencement of accounting impairment of goodwill. Revenue, however, improved to 672.99 million ringgit from 478,000 ringgit previously, as EWI recorded its strongest quarterly sales of 448 million ringgit in the fourth quarter, bringing its full year sales to 1.4 billion ringgit. For FY21, the two companies have set a combined sales target of 5 billion ringgit. Dutch Lady Milk Industries will spend 340 million ringgit to build new manufacturing facilities on the three parcels of land in Banda Enstek Negeri Sembilan that it bought earlier this year. In a filing with Brosa Malaysia, the group said the facilities will include manufacturing and warehousing, support and office facilities. They will be used for the manufacturing of the group's dairy products, with capacity and space for the manufacturing of other variations that it may produce. Dutch Lady said the facilities will be environmentally friendly and safe and will introduce new technology which will improve the group's efficiency and productivity. The facilities will be constructed between 2021 and 2025. The group will use internal funds for the investment.